hello students welcome to engineers academy do hit the subscribe button if you are here for the first time now we are going to solve this problem which says that the anchor bolt was pulled out of the concrete wall and the filier surface formed part of a frustum and cylinder this indicates a shear failure occurred along the cylinder bc and a tension failure along the frustum ab if the shear and normal stresses along these surfaces have the magnitude shown determine the force p that must have been applied to the bolt so the problem says that we have this anchor bolt and we need to find the force p with which this anchor bolt to be pulled out such that uh, we have the tension stress here and we have the shear stress of 4.5 megapascal magnitude here and it says that um, when the bolt is pulled out of the concrete wall the failure surface is formed and the failure surface is in the form of a frustum and a cylinder so as you guys can see that when this uh, anchor bolt is pulled out what it will do is that it will apply the force on the concrete wall in this direction and as a reaction the concrete wall will apply the force on the failure surface in the opposite direction so we are having the tensile stress in this AB part of the failure surface which is making the frustum like this and here we will be having the shear stress so we can say that um, the stress in the frustum part is we can say let's say that this average uh, tensile stress is produced by force F1 let's say F1 divided by the, a the surface area of the failure surface of the frustum so the, we need to find the this surface area for which the tensile stress is acting right so we have to find the area for for this this surface area for the frustum so as we know that the area of the frustum is we can say that the area of the frustum will be equal to pi multiplied by a capital r plus mar or multiplied by the slant length so this is the slant length let's see this is s this is the capital R and this is the small r. Now the small r is given, this is the small r, you guys can see here. So this is 0.025 mm if we divide this by 1000, so small r is 0.025. So the, the capital R is not given, this is the capital R, right? So we must find the capital R, we are given the 45 degree angle here. So if I draw a line here, let's say if I draw a line here, then we will have a right angle triangle here this is given this is 50 mm so if we make a right angle triangle here so we will have the right angle triangle will look like this let's say this will be our right angle triangle and the height of this triangle is given if we draw a line here like this so we will have that right angle triangle here as well so first let me show it here so this will be so this is our right angle triangle you guys can see this this is small r and similarly this is that small r and let's say this is x so we can say that this is small r let's say this is x this angle is 45 and this length is 50 mm or we can say 0 0.05 meters so from this we can say that capital R will be equal to R plus X so we can say that the capital R is equal to R plus X so we know small r we must find the X so this is this is our slant length so now if we apply 1045 right so we can say 1045 so this 1045 of this angle will be the perpendicular divided by the base so we can say that the perpendicular is 0 0.05 the base is X so from this we can say that x is 0 0.05 divided by 1045 so we can say 0 0.05 divided by 1045 this gives a 0 0.05 so x is equal to 0 0.05 as well so we can say that the capital radius is equal to r plus x which is 0 0.025 plus 0 0.05 so we can say 0 0.025 so this gives a 0 0.075 so the capital radius is 0 0.075 meters or we can say this is 75 mm so here the area will be pi 
zero point zero seven five plus zero point the small radius is zero point so if I apply the sine of 45 degrees so we can say sine of 45 will be the perpendicular so the perpendicular is 0 0.05 and the hypotenuse is that slant length so we can say that the slant length is 0 0.05 divided by sine of 45 so we can say that 0 0.05 divided by sine of 45 this gives us 0 0.07 Zero seven in meters. So now we can find the area. Now the area will be equal to pi, and this is we can say we can now multiply the slant length. So this is the slant length. So we can say that this is, or we can say that the slant edge. So this is zero point zero seven zero seven. So this will give us the area, the surface area along which the failure surface is in tension. So we can say that pi. 0 0.075 plus 0 0.025 into 0 0.0707 so this gives me the area 0 0.02221 meter square so now as we are given that the failure area is in tension and the tension is magnitude is 3 mega pascal so we can say that this is 3 into 10 raised to the power 6 New, Newton per meter square. So from this we can find the force, the resultant force which will be equal to 3 into 10 raised to the power 6 Newton per meter square multiplied by the area which is this 0 0.02221 meter square. Meter square will cancel out, we will have the force which is 3 multiplied by 0 0.02221 multiply by 10 raised to the power 6 this gives us 66,630 and this is in newtons so this is f1 now let's assume that uh, let's assume that this f1 this f1 is the resultant of all the average stress which is acting on the surface area of this frustum of the failure area so let's assume that half of that F, F1 is acting on this side and half of the resultant is acting on, on this side, on the, on the right hand side and on the left hand side. So then we can say that um, if we look for this 2D diagram of the failure surface, then we will have the F1 force, half of F1 force will be acting in this direction. We can say this will be F1 divided by 2 and we will have half of the F1 force acting on this side. And similarly, let's say that F2 force is acting on the cylindrical surface where the shear, for, where the shear stress is acting. So we can say that the shear stress is equal to F2 divided by the area. Now this area will be the area, the surface area of the cylinder. So the surface area of the cylinder is, we can say that is always equal to 2 pi r into L. And this is the L. The height of the cylinder is L. So now we have 2 pi small r is 25 mm. You guys can see this is 25. We can say this is 0 0.025 into L, which is 30 mm. So this is 30 mm. So 30 divided by 1000 is 0. We can say this is 0 0.03 meters. So this will give us the surface area of the cylinder. So here we can say that this is the area of the frustum. Let me write area sub F and this is area of the cylinder. Let's see. So this is the area of the cylinder. This is the area of the frustum. So we can say 2 pi multiplied by 0 0.025 multiplied by 0 0.03. So this gives us 0 0.004712. So let me write 0 0.004712. Or we can say that this is this is in meters. So we can say that this is 4.712 into 10 raised to the power of minus 3 meters. So this is the area of the cylinder. Now we, we are given that the shear stress is 4.5 megapascal. So this is equal to 4.5 into 10 raised to the power 6 Newton per meter square 
So F2 is equal to 4.5 10 raised to the power 6 Newton per meter square multiplied by that area, which is 4.72712 7, into 10 raised to the power minus 3 meter square. This is meter square. So now we can say that 4.5 into 10 raised to the power 6 multiplied by 4.712 into 10 raised to the power minus 3. So this gives us F2 21,204 newtons. Now again we are assuming that uh, since this this force is given by the average shear stress which is acting on the surface area of the cylinder. So we can, we can assume that half of the force is acting on this side of the cylinder and half of the force is acting on this side of the cylinder. So, so here we will have F2 divided by 2 and here we will have F2 divided by 2. So let's draw those forces here. So here we will have F2 divided by 2 and here we will have F2 divided by 2. Now since we want to find this uh, force P, so we need to resolve these forces. So now F1 divided by 2 is making 45 degree angle. So if, if, if I draw a perpendicular line here, uh, sorry, if I draw a vertical line here which is perpendicular with this line and this force is perpendicular with this line, then we will have 45 degree angle here as well. So we can say that this angle is 45 degree and similarly we are having 45 degree angle here as well. So now we can resolve this F1 divided by 2 into its components. So we will have one of its components in this direction. So this one will be the sine component and here we will have the cos component. So we will have this cos component and we will have this cos component. So this is, we can say, F1 divided by 2 cos of 45. And similarly, this one is the cos component. So now since we want to find that force P, then we will apply the sum of the forces in the y direction. So or we can say that the sum of the forces in the vertical direction. So the sum of the forces in the y must be equal to 0. Upward direction is considered to be positive. Now we have that P force which is acting in the upward direction. That is acting in the positive direction. So we write plus P. And then we have these two cost components of these two forces which are acting in the downward direction, which are the cost component. So we are having 2 times F1 divided by 2 cos of 45 degrees. And then we have these two shear forces. So, And they are acting in the downward direction as well. So we write minus 2 F2 divided by 2. So this is equal to 0. Now 2 will cancel out here and 2 will cancel out here and we can say that P force is equal to F1 cos of 45 plus F2 and now F1 is 66,630 6, cos of 45 and this is F2 which is 21,204. So we can say that that P force which is required to generate that uh, tensile stress and the shear stress in the failure surface will be equal to 66,630 cos of 45 plus 21,204. So this gives us 68,318.5 Newton. Or we can say that this is equal to 68.3 kilonewton force. So that anchor bolt must be pulled with a force of 68.3 kilonewton force in order to have the tensile stress in the frustum equals to 3 megapascal and the shear stress equal to 4.5 megapascal in the, the cylindrical uh, failure surface. So this is the solution of this particular problem. I hope this will help you in your learning. Do subscribe Engineers Academy for the solution of such more problems from Mechanics of Materials by R.C. Hibler.